Halo Infinite is here, they said I lied, and let's talk about the truth. Halo Infinite, a game that is near and dear to my beating little heart, is now here. You can go play the multiplayer. You can play the single players. It is all now out in the glory to play on your favorite console and or PC screen or mobile phone or however you really want to play. Anyways, Halo Infinite is now here, and so the full journey is now complete. But we need to talk about something big because there's a lot going on here. So anyways, Halo Infinite is out. I am enjoying the multiplayer. It's not perfect. I have yet to you know fully play the single player campaign. But I suspect I'm going to enjoy it based on the really good reviews. And overall, I'm really, really optimistic about where Halo Infinite is headed. There was a very turbulent journey to get here. We talked about it. We documented it. I got drugged through the mud multiple times for reporting on things that are now proven to be accurate. And so I, I want to just sort of clear the air and, and talk about some things that went on in the past because then I may be able to finally not look at this game and think, gosh, I got drugged through the mud for no reason. And anyways, let's just dive in. So you might remember last July. Last July, I put out a video and it was part of a podcast that talked about multiplayer and single player shipping separately. You can watch that clip here. Uh, one source is saying that multiplayer is not going to be shipping with single player this fall. Now, that little sentence there really kicked off a massive firestorm because things happened. I got called out and said that information wasn't accurate. Phil Spencer came out on Animal Crossing and then talked about saying, hey, they did consider it. And things went on. And, you know, the, the truth is now that obviously things did get shifted for a year. We know the game got delayed. And technically, they did now ship the game separately, right? We had multiplayer come out last month and we got single player this month. But that's not really exactly what I'm wanting to dig into because following that bit of information, I chatted with a bunch of people who were working on the project and did a, a longer write-up, a, a longer write-up that talked about the turbulent journey of 343 development of Halo Infinite. We now know it's out in the public that, hey, it was really tough based on what happened last July with that video or that gameplay that they put out with Craig. We all know the memes. We don't need to dive into that. But my bit of information about the games being separate really put into a tizzy, honestly, my credibility at the time. And now we have more information. So Bloomberg has a new post out, uh, a new you know publication out. It says how Microsoft went from disaster to triumph. And so they got to talk to uh, Joseph Staten. They got to talk to, I think, a couple other people inside of 343. And a little known uh, journalist named Jason, who you probably recognize, also contributed. And my friend Dina Bass talked about how they turned around Halo Infinite and got the game out, including the fact that they cut, I believe, up to two thirds of some of the content originally planned. Hopefully we'll see that later. But you should definitely go read it because it's a well-written post and talks about many different things but much like any good journalistic reporting especially because i believe this product or this post is going to print they had to cut some information they had to cut some things out and so jason actually said hey uh early on they actually did consider that they were going to ship things from 2019 and 2020 meaning they were going to have single player one year and multiplayer in another year now this might sound familiar because that is exactly what i reported back in july but following my post about the turbulent development of Halo, 343 lashed out at me on Reddit. And I'm going to read the comment that they wrote more than a year ago at this time. It says, the reporting at the time said that multiplayer would not be shipping with single player this fall. Now, he is specifically drilling into that fact, not the entire turbulent post. That is an important distinction. For a hot minute, it was creating a storm on social media until I chimed in to debunk it. The tweet that made that claim was deleted. Phil Spencer went on Animal Talking recently, and while discussing the infinite shift to 2021, did mention that separating multiplayer and campaign was briefly considered before the decision was made to shift to all next year. These are not the same things at all as when comparing it to my reporting that says, hey, they considered splitting it up. He goes on to say, and this is where I have a problem with it. Sam's unsubstantiated report in late July that I just played for you was 100% false and no plans or discussion had ever happened. Campaign was never going to ship without multiplayer, period, period. Now, in the report today from Bloomberg, they actually said, now it was on the cutting room floor, but he tweeted it out because it was part of the post and the content that was gathered. He says the game was delayed multiple times. One early plan was to release multiplayer in 2019 and campaign in 2020. This predates my video, which means that this was actually a plan that was 
on the agenda for Halo Infinite, which means that my report was not unsubstantiated, which means I was not lying when I wrote and talked about this stuff. It was reported from accurate sources. Now, I will fully admit, I will fully admit, having a year gone by, the game is now out, you have this report from Bloomberg that I was not exactly 100% one-to-one aligned with the details. But I was not off by a metric mile, and it was not definitely not 100% inaccurate. We have it very clearly from a leadership inside of Microsoft with Phil Spencer and from Staten that this was a consideration that was done and is not 100% unsubstantiated. Further, in the Bloomberg Post, they talk about how the heavy use of contractors was a big problem. Man, that sure sounds familiar because that's exactly what I wrote more than a year ago, further validating that the information I had was accurate. And so I don't want to just like live in the past, but as somebody who's done this or for many, many years, and I'm, I'm starting another career in software development and having a heck of a time and a lot of fun and still keeping this YouTube going, it's a really big blow when a company comes out and says, what you just said is 100% inaccurate and unsubstantiated, when we now know, in fact, it was not unsubstantiated and was accurate. Keep in mind, that community managers, not just at 343, across the energy in the industry, their job is to protect the company and the game asset and to spin a narrative that aligns with what they need, not with what is actually happening. When this post came out, I got slaughtered on Twitter for months. People, every time I tweet something, says, oh, your report was unsubstantiated. You're just trying to bring down Halo. You hate Halo, that sort of stuff. And it came into my email. It came into the YouTube comments. It came onto Twitter and it was not wrong information. So I just like now that this is all out and we have it from multiple angles, I want to put this to bed personally because I like it's just it's rough when that happens when you're on this side of the table that a company slams you down knowing that it was not accurate. And so they're just trying to protect it. And, and, and I get it. I understand why community managers do these things. But at the same time, it's really frustrating when they call you out in such a proverbial way that no matter what you do following that is degraded. And that maybe that was the intent to try to undermine you know, the information that I was reporting. And so I don't know. Either way, I just wanted to get this out there now that we have the last bit of information. And I am going to turn this video off and I am going to go play the single player campaign.